I think it's recording now. Would you like to lead us in prayer, Terry? Just a quick Hail Mary or anything else? Um, let's pray for the Holy Spirit to come and uh, fill this meeting with, with the Holy Spirit's energy and inspiration and guidance. Holy Spirit, you are the one who Jesus said would teach us everything we need to know. And, and so we ask you, Holy Spirit, to come and anoint each of us to get the most out of these next you know, 40 minutes or so for the sake of the glory of God, for the sake of evangelization and bringing others to the glory of God. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, to cover this conversation with your precious blood, protecting it from any kind of mishaps. And, and Lord, we, I ask you to, uh, to, Father God, to embrace with your love everybody who is with us right now, Lori and, and Joan and Michael um, and myself, but anybody who will see this in the future as well. Just embrace with your holy love, Abba Father. Help us to know that you are so pleased with what we are doing with our gifts and talents. And so let's together ask the Blessed Mother's uh, help. Hail Mary, full of grace, grace. the Lord is Lord with you. you. Blessed Lord are you Lord among Lord women, Lord. and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, Terry, I'll let you take the floor. To start us out a bit about your story, anything else you would like to share to really kick off this workshop on digital apostolate? So go right ahead. Well, uh, the short form, short story form of of how I got here, you know, how I got to this place where the Lord is um, working through me. Uh, I, my husband and myself have always been. Um, technology oriented and i think we were the first people on our block to get um the first computer in the home <laughs> and um you know and that was that really ages me but um when uh good in in 1995 the beginning of 95 my husband and i ralph and i formed founded good news ministries of tampa bay and what it is, it started out as a, uh, it's a ministry to help people grow closer to God and then, you know, grow in holiness and have that holiness influence others to change the world. And initially we did that through speaking engagements and we had a lot of that going on. And then the internet became publicly available. In 96, we made our first website. And I mean, that was early, early days where you coded everything by hand in notepad. And um, it, it, uh, I recognized right from the beginning the potential this would have and the, the potential for the kingdom of God, for people to be able to connect on the internet, to be able to reach resources on the internet, and um, so we we just let that side of the ministry grow, and it grew a lot faster than the speaking engagement side. I was an advocate in my diocese. I was the like I called myself like the Johnny Appleseed of the diocese with the internet dropping off where you know seeds wherever I could to say you need to have a website. I was promoting to parishes. I was promoting to diocesan ministries. You need to have a website. And so I created some of the first websites in my diocese. And uh, so uh, over time, as technology has changed and advanced, I have studied and jumped into whatever looked like an opportunity to affect the world and reach people through the technology, the digital technology. And so like a few years ago, everybody was talking about VR 
you know, and and getting those those goggles that you know you would look at things in virtual reality. And so we I made some virtual retreats using that technology, but that's kind of like never really grew very much. So uh, the popularity of it and and whatnot is just kind of been stagnant. So uh, so you know this is what working for the Lord in the digital world is all about. You try, you test whatever interests you in uh, in the technology, in the digital world, in the physical world. I mean, if you're an artist and you like to paint, for example, um, then you look at how can this translate into the digital world to reach more people. And that's, that is something that is very exciting because this is how we can make a bigger difference if we just are tied down to our own little physical world we we don't have as much sphere of influence but when we use the internet and we use the technologies that connect people then um welcome a, a added t aditya i don't know sorry if i slaughtered your name there um and whoops lost her briefly uh anyways so it's it's opens up this whole realm of opportunities and the the whole thing is about daring to explore whatever interests you because scripture tells us that our desires you know the god answers the desires of our hearts well guess what god's the one who put those desires into us in the first place and hello Hyder. and uh so when you pursue whatever you have a passion for whatever you have an interest in even if it fails or reaches some kind of a dead end it's all part of the learning experience and you go for it god will bless whatever you do that he knows is the right path for you to be taking and however because we don't have a direct phone connection to the holy spirit sometimes we misread the holy spirit uh sometimes our our passionate energy say oh this is really cool like when i was experimenting with virtual reality technology um you know it and i could still be very involved in virtual reality but you have to look at everything that you're trying and everything that you're exploring everything that you have a desire to do learn how to do it well learn how to excel in it and then see which one flourishes and the ones that don't you learn from that and that helps you develop further into the future with what you do what what you do do um let me give it uh, uh, like a little parable, a little example of how that works. Uh, in the old days, and I guess maybe they even do that now, there is a profession called grape shearers. These are the people who come along the grapevines and they look at the grapes that are starting to grow. Now, I would normally think, wow, look at all these grapes growing. Let's just, you know, give them fertilizer and water and, and let them all grow to their fullest potential. But no, the grape shearer realizes that none of them will reach their full potential if, if, it, if the vine is cluttered with lots of grapes. So the grape shearer comes along and shears, prunes away certain clusters of grapes in, and he determines which are the right clusters so that the other clusters will grow bigger. And that's what we need to do in using digital technology for our gifts and talents. We need to explore whatever interests you, whatever catches your eye, whatever new thing comes along that seems to have potential. And then ultimately you, you look at it with the help of the Holy Spirit and say, I'm not getting a lot of results from this, so let me shear that off. 
because it's all about time management. There are we're we're living in an awesome time in the sense of what's available in the digital world for us to do. What technologies are available? How many different ways we can reach people? And by paying attention to which ones are more fruitful, which ones are growing better, and which ones are not, and cutting out the ones that are not, which hurts sometimes. It's like, oh, darn, I was really hoping virtual reality was going to be something I could take off with. And uh, and that is that keeps you from getting overwhelmed because truly the potential is overwhelming the potential of what you can do it can be and will be very overwhelming and so on that note though i want to congratulate you all of you for um and anybody who listens to this in the future because you're here listening to this i want to congratulate you on wanting to use your gifts and talents in the digital world for the kingdom of god you know god chose you for this you wouldn't have an interest in this if he hadn't chosen you for this mission and my mission in part my mission for this workshop my mission this side of my ministry is to help you hone in on how you can reach your fullest potential doing for the glory of God, changing the world through your gifts and talents as a digital apostle. Um, I want to read to you something from this is this is the decree on the apostolate of the laity. This is one of the Vatican II documents. And this is your license as a layperson to do whatever ministry the holy spirit leads you to do and i mean you don't need to go and and find a, a priest to give you permission yes it is definitely good to have a priest as a spiritual director or to have you know to have some kind of authority to make sure that you know, an authority who keeps an eye on you or or i like to use the word collaborates with you because if you start your own ministry, if you start, and anything you do using your gifts and talents for the Lord is a ministry. So if you start like Michael did, you he started the uh, Catholicism for the modern world. It's good to make sure to have some kind of checks and balances to make sure that you are everything you're doing is remaining within the teachings of the church. The, the, the teachings that go back to, you know, scripture 2000 plus years ago and, you know, the things that Jesus said and the first apostles said and, you know, the books of the New Testament, the encyclicals, the, the letters of the New Testament. We need to make sure that we stay in the true teachings of the church. And in this world today, it's real easy to go astray. And, and we need to be educated on what the teachings of the church are. And we need to have somebody collaborating with us. I mean, like, for example, how I do that. Uh, we used to have a chaplain in Good News Ministries. That was when we first got started. Uh, he has since passed away, and the Lord has never replaced him, although we have friendships with priests. And so I have I one of the things that I do through Good News Ministries is I produce daily reflections on the readings from mass for each day of the week. And I've been writing these for years since 1999, actually. And I've always said to the priests who signed up, let me know if I say anything. In, if I write anything that is not in keeping with the true teachings of the church. And so, uh, you know, once in a while, somebody might write in and say, uh, the way you wrote that can be a little misleading or a little confusing. And I'll go, oh, well, thank you. And then I correct that and it'll be changed like that forever. Uh, but 
it's it's important for you to realize that this document gives you the license to go and do what God calls you to do as a layperson. And there's um, and on my website, I actually have a web course that leads you through this document. Um, and it's one of the things that we used to do when we were doing uh, speaking engagements. We gave courses on this. And now, now I do it digitally and would love to, you know, if you guys want to go through this whole document together sometime, I'd love to give a, you know, a workshop series on it. But um, that this one line in here, I really want to point out to you. And this is from the second paragraph. It says that the member, the member of the church, who fails to make his proper contribution, and I'm going to, I'm inserting a few things because I'm pulling this out of context. And so I'm like adding back into it some of the surrounding context. So the member who fails to make his proper contribution with his gifts and talents to the development of the church must be said, and let me say development of the church, they're also talking about for the glory of God for the conversion of souls, for changing the world into a holier place. Um, must be said to be useful neither to the church nor to himself. So um, let me make sure I read that clearly. The member who fails to make his proper contribution to the development of the church must be said to be useful neither to the church nor to himself. Put it another way, if we do not use our full potential, we do not strive for excellence and strive to reach the full potential of what we can do with our gifts and talents, we're considered useless to the church and to ourselves. There's nothing short of excellence that God requires. Anything else is a disappointment and I think we'll have to spend purgatory time on. Uh, so that's how important you are in using your gifts and talents, your creativity for the kingdom of God with the tools of the digital world, because that's where we have endless possibilities, endless potential. I mean, some of the potential, for example, you know, how are you using social media? How are you marketing? your ministry, your product, your art, your uh, website, your uh, whatever that you do, you know, how your podcast, how well are you marketing it? Are you getting trained? Are you taking advantage of courses and um, webinars and YouTube videos that help you market it better? Um, how well are you? Do you do that? Do you do yeah. that where you could help us? Yes, as a matter of fact, um, I do offer myself as a mentor. And uh, if you do want to uh, use me as a mentor, uh, the first session, an hour session is free. After that, we'll just talk about what's affordable because it, to me, it's not about the money. It's about let's collaborate and let's help. I want to help you reach your full potential. Um, Perfect. This is what I need. <laughs> So I was talking about um, making myself available as a mentor uh, in my ministry, Good News Ministries, which is, you know, got multiple websites. It's very digital. It's uh, we're on social media. We and well, I'm going to go over some of, of the, the things in a minute, but uh, we get out there. We get the word out and you know, we get our resources, our Catholic faith building resources out there as widely as as is possible i do have a staff that helps and um and some things as i mentioned earlier you can't do everything you have to do good time management you have to shear prune out some of the things that you're doing and so i've tried things that like in social media for example you know we've had a presence on gab and uh, me, we, and some other ones, and, and and we collect stats and observe and how many people are interacting with the posts. 
And because of time management, we've actually left Gab and MeWe uh, because we weren't having as much of an outreach there. I mean, very, very little response from people there. Facebook has been much better for us. Instagram has been much better for us. Excuse me. And I so, will comment there, uh, just with my own multimedia apostolate, just reducing the amount of uh, extra work you're making for yourself, like Twitter, it wasn't working out for us. So we stopped uh, spending the time on Twitter we could use on growing the Facebook page. So just having priorities is really um, very crucial. So yes, you along Thank there. You. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. So as you know, in offering my mentoring services, I also uh, want to make available the possibility that whatever your creative project is, there might be an opportunity at Good News Ministries for, for Good News Ministries to promote, to help you get it promoted, um, publishing it through our website or publishing, uh, or, or like, for example, um, I'm helping Michael get more widely known, his ministry get more widely known. In having this workshop and agreeing to this workshop, I have a website, websites that a lot of users sign up for things and we have a big mailing list as a result. And so I sent out invitations to come to this through my website, uh, th through these mailings that I sent out. And uh, so I, I love collaborating with people. I love empowering other ministries. And so if there's a potential that we can, that I can help empower what you're doing. I mean, even if nobody from Good News Ministries is in this workshop right now, doesn't mean they're not going to see it later. Or does it mean that they haven't gone to Michael's website and said, oh, look at this awesome, you know, look at the, what's here. And, and, you know, it's just something we really don't know those results on. Although I can look at stats in the emails that get sent out um, for click throughs. And that's something else that I want to mention uh, is, is being able to measure your effectiveness is important. And although emails are kind of passe for some people, texting is what where a lot of people prefer, but um, in emails, you people actually still do read their emails. And in, e in an email software program like Constant Contact, or my favorite, what I use, is called Dada Mail, D-A-D-A -D -A Mail. And it's something you install on your own website, and you have total proprietary control over it unlike constant contact or a similar service. But these services give you the ability to look at stats of how many people click through. So I can go back um, next week and look at how many people clicked on the link to Michael's website. That, so that was something else I wanted to mention. Um, uh, and I actually was working on two thought processes of that, the mentorship program and also marketing and uh and measurements uh but the another aspect of the the uh, mentoring that i wanted to mention is that um i'm open to talking about uh internships at good news ministries as well so that was just it's just something there that uh, i wanted to toss out but now getting back to things that I, the, in the digital world that i that you should really be considering taking advantage of fully if you're not yet. Um, I mentioned social media, marketing. Um, how much are you using texting apps? Texting is a big thing, but if you, my two favorites, and uh, the, the real biggies that people, almost everybody now has accounts with is WhatsApp and Telegram. I love Telegram better because you can schedule things ahead of time with Telegram. We at Good News Ministries, in addition to the daily reflections, it's just one of the resources that we provide. 
uh, we have things having to do with saints, we have prayers, we have a whole bunch of different things. But the, the daily reflections, that's probably the most popular thing that people come to Good News Ministries for. And we have them on the website where people can look it up and they could look up past ones. Yes. We, we have it, uh, just a second, please. We have it going out through email and we have it going out through text messaging. And that goes out through Telegram as well as WhatsApp. And on Telegram, we can actually schedule as many days in advance as we want. When you're doing something daily, that really helps. Okay, did you have a question, Chip? Did somebody have a question? I believe uh, TC asked in the chat, uh, he or hmm. she said, does having a Catholic ministry need approval by the church? Not technically. This decree on the Apostle of the Lady is your license to do your ministry. However, um, it, your ministry should be something that you can make known to your local bishop and get approval for. And I've and Good News Ministries has also done that. Uh, I just sent a letter, really just an email, to the the chancellor at in, at, in my diocese and said, um, I would like to get the bishop's letter letter of approval for Good News Ministries. And I was already known around the diocese from things that I had been involved in in the diocese, so it, it wasn't hard for me to get that. Uh, but um, it is it is important that you can tell people that, yes, I am under the authority of my bishop. It's not required, but it is really good. And as I said before, it's really important to have some kind of, of um, checks and balances. Somebody who can say, hey, you're going off the rails here. Somebody, somebody who knows, by the way, I have a theology degree. If you don't, find somebody with a theology degree and a scripture scholar and make sh sure that you have somebody checking to make sure that you're not teaching something or promoting something that is not true to the teachings, the traditional teachings of the Catholic church. When I say traditional, I'm not talking Latin mass. I'm talking about the church magisterium that goes back over 2000 years. There is like a line in the Code of Canon Law that says if you want to use the word Catholic in your title, that you should seek uh, some type of approval or whatnot. It's not really clarified by what approval they mean by that, like a local priest or a bishop. Um, so, yeah, I think like when in doubt, it is good to just seek some type of approval from a priest or whatnot. Well, I'm in California, so the dominant religion here is Catholicism. And um, usually ministries are Christian, you know, non-Marian. Uh, so I just needed to clarify that. And and I also recommend telling your pastor about what you're doing because he, maybe he could become a spiritual director for you for it. Uh, um, but uh, I, I would always, every time we got a new pastor change in our parish, my husband and I would go and have a meeting with him and tell, introduce him to Good News Ministries, tell him what we were doing. Um, that, but the typical response we got was, they're not used to people doing that. So the reaction was, what do you want from me? And like, Nothing, Father. We're not asking you to financially support us. We're not actually asking you to promote us to the parish. We just want you to know that this is what we're doing. And if anybody calls to say, hey, do you ever hear of Terry and Ralph Modica? Um, are they legit? You know us because, see, we get involved in the parish. So the, we get involved in, in various parish ministries and helping out various ways. We get to know the priest. We take him out to dinner. And so that priest, um, while not officially a chaplain of Good News Ministries, is somebody that if, if someone said, hey, I need to know you're legitimate. Uh, would your pastor, you know, can I contact your pastor to find out? Or, you know, normally what I do is they say, I want to know you're le legitimate. I show them the letter of approval from the from the diocese. But it is good to have that because somewhere along the line, somebody will question you. Yeah. And so uh, do you have any more material, Terry, to share or should we transition into general uh, questions? Let me just uh, run down a few more things that, you know, I, that I wanted to touch base on 
uh, that is good to um, to utilize to make sure you're reaching your potential. Um, you know, whatever it is that is your passion. You know, we mentioned social media, marketing, texting apps, email campaigns, uh, podcasts. You know, if you're not yet making podcasts, consider making podcasts. It's another way to help get. Yes, there's a learning curve for it, but it's another way to help get your message out or get get people to see what you do. Uh, and those um, podcasts consider making a, a course out of them, a video course or even just an audio course. Video is best. Uh, whatever your expertise is, there are other people who would like to learn from your expertise and develop their own expertise in it. So that's another way to get your potential more fully reached. Um, and the one last thing I wanted to mention was eBooks. Whether, you, you know, if you're not, if you don't think you're a good writer, then get somebody who's a ghost writer or get an, a, somebody who can edit it for you and work with you collaborative per, as a collaborator uh, on it. And, um, it, because ebooks that you can offer on social media or any of these other methods that I've mentioned, ebooks uh, to help get your product out, your uh, creative area of ministry, whatever you're creating, ebooks can be an outlet for that. You might have to think outside the box of what an ebook is. Like, for example, I've created some ebooks. They're only uh, well, ebooks digital. Of course, they're only digital. <laughs> um, I do have ebooks of of some of my hard my paperback books, but you can make an ebook out of if you're a photographer, for example, which I am. I made some ebooks from vacation trips where I took beautiful pictures, and so I made an ebook where it a beautiful scenery followed by scripture and prayer for each picture. And so there's another idea for an ebook. So that's what I wanted to um, to uh, yep, that's everything I wanted to cover. So what what questions do you have for me, or tell me about your particular particular area of creativity that you would like to explore more? Well, real quick in regards to podcasts. I do follow multiple uh, uh, Catholic podcasts, and uh, one thing I do notice is that uh, none of them ever start or finish with any prayers. So, just curious, um, you know, your thoughts on that. that um, I think maybe that's their way of, you know, kind of keeping uh, Christians and Mormons, you know, on the page. But, um, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. If you're if you're glorifying God with your which we all need to be glorifying God with the gifts he's given us. We give them back to him as uh, by, by using those gifts and talents to better the world, to make the world a holier place, to, to bring people to Christ or to help them grow closer to Christ from where they already are. And absolutely a podcast should, if not begin, at least end with a prayer. And when I, my podcasts, which are called Footsteps to Heaven, uh, and I have a website just for that called footstepstoheaven.com. And uh, I don't begin with, I begin with prayer, but silently before I hit record. And at the end of every podcast, I end with a prayer. And my, I have, a, a, and I recommend this method. I have a unique prayer. I don't just do, um, you know, Hail Mary, our father, you know, and, and wrote prayers because people can hit stop and not really pray with you because they know the prayers. I end with praying for the people who had watched the video to be empowered by what they heard. And I, I am absolutely convinced that what the world needs most of all, not just Jesus Christ and people having a um, personal relationship with him, but even more important, goes to goes to, the two goes together it's not an either or is a personal relationship with the holy spirit because it's the holy spirit who enables us to be the holy christians that jesus calls us to be to live out the life that we're transformed into 
when we turn our lives over to Jesus and in our baptisms. And so I end all of my podcasts with a come Holy Spirit prayer. And each prayer is different because it has to do with what they just heard in that podcast. So yeah, that's very good. Something I need to improve on as well. I kind of started my podcast out with a uh, prayer at the end. But then um, I started to do roundtables or multi-person shows. It was kind of hard to pray with like three or four people on the screen. And um, now I have like a prayer by a archbishop kind of at the end, tagged on after in the outro. Uh, and so that works, of course, That's but it would be good to actually pray together like before the show ends. So I need to work on that myself. Um, yeah, like, does anybody have any other questions? I do have a question myself. But I'll let someone else ask theirs. Um, how do you even do a podcast? Do you just record on your phone and then put it on the on your website, or? Well, let's have a whole webinar on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. good. So, okay. But, yeah, there's there's different ways of doing it. My way of doing it is I have a webcam attached to my computer um, that has a high resolution and uh, it I use a computer software program to record with. So I do it all on my computer because I also edit it on my computer, and which gives me a lot more control, uh, editorial ability than when just using my phone. But if you've got your phone handy, I mean, I've done it during COVID lockdowns, for example, I took my phone and I walked, I live, praise God, it's such a gift to live here. I live, <clears throat> excuse me, I live in the woods. <clears throat> so since I couldn't go to church and stores or anything else, I walked through my woods and I took a picture of the walk. And then I turned that, it was not really a podcast. I mean, I could have talked during it, but I just wanted the sounds of nature. And then, you know, I turned that into a meditation with Jesus with words on the screen that people could look at. So uh, so be creative. You know, if all you know what to do right now is use the phone, start using it. And then learn how to do it on your computer in the next workshop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, like podcasts um, really don't have a length. They can be five minutes. They can be five hours. So anywhere in between there, you can edit them or you can choose not to edit them. A lot of people actually don't spend time editing the podcast because uh, they kind of want that authentic conversation. If it is somebody talking with another person, but you can do them by yourself, of course. Uh, and even for Lavinia, since she's doing fiction, she can do like audio dramas. So kind of voicing out the characters, um, just maybe do a chapter for each episode and you could call that a podcast. True. Yeah, I I like doing non-editing as well as editing. It depends. Now, uh, my personal theory on what I particularly podcast is that it should be no longer than half an hour. Um, and invariably while I'm recording, it goes over a half an hour. And so I edit out and when I listen to it, I said, you know what, I'm being redundant there. Let me edit that out. And so I bring it down to a half an hour. Um, sometimes you want to make a 15 minute video. The shorter it is, the more you need to be a good editor. <laughs> yeah. Just for YouTube videos or even shorts, those are really popular on Instagram or they, they call them reels on Facebook. Those like 10 second videos. If you, um, really condense information down into that time frame. Um, it you can a, be watched by a lot of people. You make a half an hour or a 15 minute video and then you slice it up into making little reels, one minute reels. Mm -hmm. That's so, a yeah. good idea. <laughs> time is valuable for a lot of people. And so if they see an hour long video, they might not watch it, but they might watch a 10 minute video. So just right. keep that in mind. Questions from any of the other guests here. I will ask uh, my question if anyone wants to think of another question, but mine goes back to VR. So you said that you were getting into VR, and that's something I never uh, knew about you or never knew about any Catholic in general. And so 
you said it was a failure. I want to ask like what you did in VR specifically, but uh, just speaking on failures, I think like personally, I failed maybe five times in the last year just with different uh, creative outputs. So there was like a social networking server. There was a YouTube channel for children, Catholicism for children. And so those never took off and they were kind of a waste of time distracting from really what uh, my apostolate was doing well. And so you do learn a lot from failures about what your true mission is. So once you can discover that, just simplify everything down to that. Yeah, back to VR. So what was your exploration of VR like? Virtual reality? I, I bought uh, a, a VR camera and I didn't get the real expensive one because uh, I mean, because you can get them like multiple thousands of dollars. And I'm like, this is an experiment. <laughs> I bought one for, I think it was $200, um, which was still felt like a big risk. But, uh, and what I did was uh, I took my camera with a tripod to, uh, and still, still pictures make much better um, VR scenes than a video because it, video really requires expensive equipment in order to get enough resolution in all the, you know, the uh, 360 de degrees all the way around. Uh, so I took this camera, put it on a tripod, it has a remote that, that clicks it and it would take a 363, I'd hide behind a tree or something so that I wasn't in it. And um, I'd snap the picture and I do this in multiple places. And then I would go to um, a VR website. It is called roundme.com. Um, I don't have an account there anymore uh, because initially it was used a lot and you know things faded over time. But uh, what I did was I'd upload these these uh 360 scenes and then i would add i'd upload music i'd upload um uh, an audio message that i recorded like you know a, a maybe five minutes or or less usually about a minute long um or three minutes because uh, there's there's one that my daily reflections i turned it into um where people could go into the virtual reality world to hear the daily reflection of you know of the day, and uh, and but that was one of the virtual reality worlds. Another virtual reality world was was it's like this going on a retreat and hearing uh, various uh, messages as you go along. And so it's like like what the person looking and you didn't need to have the goggles to see it. You could just look at it on your screen or your phone and your computer or phone both works fine and um and it, you would click on a spot uh it had a certain little icon that indicated to click here and you click on it and that would enter another scene with a different background music different message uh they click on to hear the message and so it would be a, i called them virtual retreats or virtual reality retreats where uh, people would just feel immersed in this other environment, wandering around through it, and uh, and being blessed by some kind of message in it. And when I initially did it, it got a really good reception. There was a lot of curious people who wanted to try it out. And people told me that they felt like they had left their house and were in this other world alone with Jesus. And they were doing this on a daily basis just to have to feel more alone with Jesus and enhance their prayer time. But over time, you know, after, you know, after a few years of this, nobody was going there anymore. So I said, oh, let's just take it down. I, you know, I even had a website called CatholicVR.net and which was the starting point for each of these different virtual reality retreats. And um, I took that down. So it was fun. I still have that camera, but I never use it anymore. 
Yeah, see, I wonder if that'll ever make a comeback. I've seen other like video game developers trying to make VR uh, rosary stations of the cross uh, scenes and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like just failing, you have to put yourself out there to fail in order to succeed. And so uh, I'm sure you had a couple other failures uh, yourself. Oh, yeah. Too, but um, yeah, you learn from those and really you take risk. That's part of being a digital apostle. So yeah, I think we've uh, passed 45 minutes just a minute ago. We started a bit late. Does anyone have any more questions? If not, I think we can end this and we can end it with a prayer. If you would like to lead us in prayer again. Okay. I'll, I'll end this similar to the way I end my podcast. Come Holy Spirit, fill us. And I'm going to I'm going to change it to uh, to more personalize it. So in your own hearts, uh, when I say the word me, you're saying it in your heart to refer to yourself. OK, come, Holy Spirit, fill me. Come, Holy Spirit, inspire me. Come, Holy Spirit, help me to learn and to respond to and to build upon everything from this workshop that you want me to, to use. Come Holy Spirit, help me to, to become excellent. Teach me how to be excellent in what I do because my gift of excellence is my response to the excellence you give to me. Come Holy Spirit, you have my permission to change me. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. So. Thanks, everyone, for joining in, but a big thank you to Terry for hosting this workshop, really the first workshop the Catholic Creators Discord server was hosting. And let me, and let me say that, um, you know, in answer to, I think it was June before, who talked about wanting some mentorship, um, you know, I, I, if you want to talk to me further and for me to mentor you in your particular field, or at least to give you some launching points um you can reach me at my website gnm which stands for good news ministries dot org just go to the contact page continue to follow terry and her work in her apostolate and so once again may god bless you all have a good saturday god bless and a good sunday tomorrow <laughs>